So you want to start running and working out, but you don't know exactly where to start. Well, in this video, I'm going to be sharing 10 tips for beginners when it comes to running or sprinting. So if this is something you might be interested in, then you're going to want to tune into the rest of this video. My name is Cindy. For those of you who may not know me, I run track professionally, so I know a lot when it comes to sprinting and running. I'm not a distance runner by any means, but a lot of the tips for running and sprinting kind of overlap. So I want to discuss some of the things that have helped me get to the level that I'm at today and the things that can help you on your fitness journey and accomplish those goals to begin running fast and training hard. So definitely consider subscribing for weekly content. So the first thing you're going to want to consider when it comes to running or sprinting is the type of shoes you have. So as an athlete, I have a lot of shoes. I run for Adidas and they send us a lot of different shoes because the right shoe apparel can help you run fast and can also help prevent injury. If you don't change out your shoes enough, sometimes you can get problems with your feet, problems with your shins, and that's not helpful. So you wanna make sure you start off with choosing the right shoe for you, whether that's a flat, shoe or a shoe that has a lot more support. If you're sprinting, you might want to invest in some spikes because that's super helpful as well. But you want to make sure it fits you properly. It's the right type of shoe. It makes you feel comfortable because you don't want to wear something that you're going to be using for a while that is just seriously uncomfortable because that does not help you run well. So that's my first tip. You want to make sure the shoes you have are super helpful. I have plenty of them and I can attest to changing them out consistently makes a world of difference when it comes to running. The second tip when it comes to starting off with your running is you're gonna wanna have the right apparel. The right attire can make or break your workouts. If you aren't comfortable with what you're wearing, then you're gonna feel discomfort throughout your runs or your sprints. You wanna have enough clothing on that makes you feel fast, but you also don't wanna feel super heavy. So for instance, let's say you're starting off with distance running. You don't wanna have a lot of layers on that make you feel heavy during your long runs. So you might have some biker shorts, some spandex that make you feel a little lighter, but you also want to make sure that these are the right sizes. We have different tops. I warm up in a lot of layers because for a sprinter, our legs need to stay really warm. But when it comes to the actual running and sprinting, we take off most of our tights, our long sleeves, all that good stuff because you want to feel as light as possible. And that goes for both sprinting and running, I believe. People don't like to feel heavy. So you really want to invest in a good apparel, good attire, stuff that feels good on you, things that you can feel confident in as well because if you're not confident in what you're wearing, then you're most likely not going to feel inspired to run consistently. So that's another thing I recommend for you if you're beginning to run. So my third tip for running and sprinting would be to hydrate. You want to hydrate your body not just with water, but with also electrolytes. So I use Vital Proteins as one of my electrolytes that helps me feel energized and have the hydration I need to go train. But if you don't like to use that, you could use Pedialyte, you could use Gatorade that has a lot of sugar, but you could use that. There's different types of electrolytes you want to fuel your body with that gets you the hydration you need. Water is great and honestly you still need to drink water, but you want to have a combination of both because having water and electrolytes is a very good sweet spot to feel good. It loosens up your muscles and makes you ready to run and makes everything feel better. You don't feel stiff. So I recommend investing in a water bottle that's really helpful for you. I like to have a liter bottle around with me that keeps me consistent, as well as another bottle that I use to put my electrolytes in. I typically don't like to put electrolytes in my water bottle because the taste just overlaps sometimes. But if you have both, that's great because you can focus on, okay, here's how much water I drink today and here's my electrolyte bottle. And that in itself can be super helpful. Number four is you're going to want to have some type of warm up before you start. So for sprinters, we have a lot of dynamic warm ups we do. We have A skips, B skips. I can do a whole video on the types of warm ups that help me get ready for my workouts and my sprinting. However, for distance runners, they may not have the same warm up that we have. However, they still go on maybe a five minute warm up or they go on an 800 meter jog before they run. There's always some type of warm up before the actual running or sprinting begins. So I recommend that you plan on warming up and not just jumping right into your workout because that helps prevent injuries, it helps get your body ready and really it just 
gets you primed to run faster. For me, if I don't warm up properly before I sprint, there's no way I'm running fast. At the biggest meets, if I don't actually warm up and put in the time to feel good, I just don't feel warm and I don't feel like I can really execute. So have a warm up plan, whether for you that's running for 20 minutes before you run your main workout or just doing some high knees before you go just to get the blood flowing. The fifth tip is you're gonna wanna have some stretches you do or some type of thing that helps your body also warm up. So I posted a stretching video not too long ago and I'll attach it up here for you guys to watch if you haven't yet. But stretching and really getting your muscles loose is also super important before you sprint or run. Hamstring stretches, doing some light knee to toe stretches, some groin stretches, anything that really makes you feel stretched out is really, really good before you work out, before you sprint and run. Because like I said before, in the last thing we just talked about, if you just try to go right away and go super quickly, it's just not gonna turn out well. So stretching is super important before, and honestly after workouts, they are both really important. Number six is you're going to want to eat the right things at the right times. So for sprinters, we like to fuel our bodies with protein. Protein really helps get our muscles strong and big and just ready to, to sprint fast. But it's also important to just have the right appropriate nutrients, whether that's from fruit or from nuts or from other things like some starches. Those things, those vegetables, all those food groups are what help us to really sprint and run well. Now for distance runners, I've noticed that a lot of my friends uh, will eat carbs, a lot of carbs after their workouts because that helps them. So maybe if you're trying to do distance, eating pasta or something a little heavier when you're done to refuel those muscles so that you don't have to deal with fatigue. So really just eating the right things at the right times. You don't want to eat a huge meal before you're sprinting because you're going to feel very heavy and you don't want to not eat anything. You don't want to start your workout with an empty stomach. So if that's a protein bar, if that's a few eggs or a few nuts or whatever that is, just eat something before you work out and whatever that looks like for you, give yourself that consistent meal and switch it up a little bit with the types of meals you do, but definitely have that, that same type of, this is what gets me fueled. This is what makes me feel good before I run because that makes a big difference for me specifically. Like food can make or break a workout. So definitely eat the right things at the right times. Number seven is you're gonna want to have proper running form. If you don't know what it looks like to run or sprint, I recommend watching some videos or looking at some runners and sprinters, but you're gonna wanna have proper form. If you're not running in a proper way, that can lead to a lot of problems. And it also just makes it super hard to t just continue to train because you're just wasting motion. If you're running kind of like this and not with proper arms and proper knees, it's just rough. So go watch some film, work on your running form. So if that means I'm gonna work five minutes today on running form and the next week I'm gonna do 10 minutes. Just do a little bit each day to really perfect that. And I still have not perfected that. I don't think anybody perfects the way they run, but I still work on it daily. And that's why I actually love watching film because film just helps me get better at sprinting, get better at my event. And so I always watch to see what else I can I be doing? How can I work on my arms? How can I work on my knees? So always do that and that's super helpful as well when it comes to running and sprinting and that will help you uh, just get it moving and get started. Number eight is focusing on your recovery. If you haven't run in like months, it's gonna take you a little bit of time to get back in shape. So if you're like, okay, today I'm gonna run for 45 minutes straight, nothing else matters. Like if you just do that, Kind of tap out quickly it's gonna be really dreadful and maybe the next day you're just not gonna want to do it and so maybe start off small so like i said with recovery it's about being smart and it's about making good decisions with how much you're pushing yourself and also doing all the good things afterwards like i said earlier stretching getting enough sleep drinking enough water but all that stuff plays into your recovery and your rest so when you're starting off with running you want to make sure that you are prioritizing that rest and recovery because grinding and pushing your body hard is important but i would honestly say that the rest and the recovery is equally if not more important because if you don't have that you can't actually train so that's super important when it comes to starting off with running and sprinting number nine is figure out what works best for you so not everybody's a sprinter not everybody's a distance runner some people are mid-distance runners 
I didn't actually know that I was a sprinter and I had fast twitch muscles until I was about 16. But when I was 11 years old, I started off with distance and I actually would do cross country races. And you know, I would do things that I wasn't very good at, I'm gonna be honest. Like just naturally as a person, distance running is not something I'm naturally gifted at because I was born with the gift of being quicker. <laughs> so that's what works for me. So I focus on sprinting workouts. And so workouts with 30 meter runs, 60 meter runs, 100 meter runs, something that's quick, but really, really high intensity now for you maybe you just don't have those fast twitch muscles and those sprint workouts are just harder than they need to be so maybe you need to focus on 20 minute long runs 30 minute long runs and that's what's going to help you stay consistent and motivated but it's also going to switch it up so during my off seasons i will do some hills and things like that and that's super helpful so maybe switching it up too can be something that works for you but definitely focus in on what it is that you're talented at and what you're gifted in and what you notice that works well for you because that in itself will keep you running well and it'll keep you motivated to keep going Lastly, I recommend when it comes to running and sprinting is to have a long and short term goal that keeps you motivated and pushing. Normally, if I don't have a goal for my week, so maybe my coach is telling me for this week, we're just going to work on my arms and my drive, my, my first half of my race. That's what helps me. But for you, maybe it's accomplishing something like I want to be able to run on the treadmill for 15 minutes straight without stopping. Have those goals because when it comes to distance running and sprinting, any type of running, it's hard. It sometimes is not fun, but the feeling and the endorphins and everything you get afterwards is amazing and feels so good. So have those goals that gets you to that place and keeps you pushing it and keeps you working hard because without those goals, you're kind of just doing it to do it and you just don't keep going. So have some type of written goal that you can look at that reminds you each and every day, okay, today's here's a new goal, next week here's a new goal, long term here's what I'm gonna be doing. So that's what I would say would help you to have the best running and sprinting experience. So I hope this video helped you guys to hear some tips from somebody who runs and sprints. It's definitely a journey, but you are capable of doing it and it's something that once you do it and you accomplish it, it's great. So give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and leave a comment down below about what type of running you're interested in starting or something you might have a question on. And I'll definitely be looking forward to seeing your comments. But thanks again. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.